is ESPN on ABC. Chinese Taipei's dominant stuff. That's heat at the top. The guy is throwing flames. Bachan Chun on a line to left and go! And a diving catch! What a play! Will drills this one. Left center, he admires it's gone! And a backflip for the ages. Yes, he does. That ends it. Curacao survives. And they will see Chinese Taipei Saturday. Welcome, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. Depending on where you're watching, ABC's coverage of the Little League World Series is presented by T-Mobile. Down to four teams, one field, and it's Lomity now for Curacao, Chinese Taipei. Game starts in just a couple of minutes. And later today, 3.30 Eastern time, it's California and Texas. And what a day, indeed, it is going to be. Welcome. I'm Carl Ravitch. Been doing this for 20 years. Never gets old, just gets better. And, in fact, they've been coming here to Williamsport since 1947. This year's field of 20 matching the largest ever. And now we're down to just four. Most of you at home have played, you've coached, you certainly have watched Little League and Little League World Series. You know the commitment it takes when it comes to time. You know there are struggles, you know there are successes. And that's what this field is all about now. Down to our final four, Needville, Texas, El Segundo, California, Chinese Taipei there, and Curacao. Collectively, They've traveled 14,000 miles to be right here on Little League's biggest stage. And you at home know how hard this whole thing is. Because of that, year in and year out, this event makes us all smile. From Tennessee's tenacious tough guy Ty McKenzie to Stella and the fellas, 2023 has been a year for the ages. Let's get to the headlines of this year's Little League World Series. It starts with a team from Cuba for the first time. They're able to make an appearance in Williamsport. They went one and two in three games, but they distinguished themselves. Tennessee mentioned Ty McKenzie. Stella and the fellas were the headliners. She tied a Little League World Series record with four hits and also pitched very well. Speaking of pitching, it's all been about that guy, Fan Chen Jin. Six and two thirds, he didn't give up a hit. He struck out 15. And how about Needville, Texas, a community of about 3,000. DJ Jablonski shut down California and everyone else that he has had a chance to see. We'll have a rematch with him on the mound. Welcome again. This, of course, is Todd Frazier. He won this 25 years ago. Olympic silver and gold medalist Jessica Mendoza. All right, Todd, let's talk about what your experiences were here and what these kids are dealing with now. Yeah, right now it's nerves. They're going through a lot right now going into these championship games. They've been here before. They understand, you know, Carousel has five guys coming back. They're excited to go, and Taipei has been here so many times. So nerves, anxiousness, but ultimately fun, and that's what Little League's about. That is fun. We'll get Jess's thoughts in a minute. Let's start with uh, Texas, all right, because Texas has Jablonski on the mound. You said the game he played against California, you felt really good about him. You feel that way again second time? Oh, without a doubt. DJ Jablonski has been dominant this whole series. He's got 15 strikeouts in 11 innings. The guy has done great. He throws a fastball and a devastating curveball. He's going to have to be lights out today again and throw that inside fastball to these California big hitters. He could do it all, exactly as a catcher, too, as well, but his pitching's going to do it at the end, and a home run might do him, vote him well again. It would help because the team he's facing is hitting a lot of home runs. California has five of the 15 that have been hit so far. Hi, right, Jess, what stood out for you so far in 2023? Gotta be Stella Weaver. I mean, Stella and the fellas, yes, but she made history, Rab. And the way that she did it, running the bases, swinging the bat, and honestly, the long line of girls and boys waiting to get her autograph for that next level of stars. She's been great. All right, the California kids. I mean, the West has traditionally, certainly recently, been the best. What's unique about this group? Oh, they can rake. And the power that they have, Carl, I mean, it has been a showcase. And it starts at the top of their lineup. Louis Laffey, he's got three going long. In fact, he went right field, center field, and left field. How about their leadoff batter, Brody Brooks? 
He's got two home runs. Between the two of them, they're about a 2,000 OPS. And they've been hitting balls all over the field. Absolutely crushing at the top of their lineup. These two, and you think about the top five, has set the tone for California. Yeah, the top five have been great. They're looking forward to another shot at DJ Jablonski. That's later first, the international crew. And yet 10 teams that have traveled one way, 40,000 miles. you got to go back home. We're talking about 80,000 miles. And that is what we are looking for today. We have Chinese Taipei and Curacao. This is a rematch of last year's international championship game. Curacao won that game. So there is a feeling of hope, of optimism, in spite of how good Taipei has been. Let's talk Curacao first here, Todd. What about their abilities on the field give you hope that they can do what no one else has done and beat Taipei? Well, let's think about this. Right now, they're batting 190 as a team, so that's not very good. So they're going to have to step up. Talking with Zino Everett, the manager of the team, he expects bigger things, and he expects them to put the bat on the ball, especially Jalen Will. He's been, their, he's been their master of playing. He plays a defense. He's their stopper as a pitcher. He's got the antics. He's going to have to hone those down just a little bit. Got a couple home runs, but for him, focus on winning the game and nothing else. Well, he is also the team's spokesman. I mean, he has got the maturity of a 20-year-old. He's with Seve. Thanks, guys. Jalen Wheel, no stranger to Williamsport and no stranger to the international championship. How you feeling? I'm feeling good because I'm here, like last year. We're here to take the chip. One of five guys on your team that made it back from last year. What did it take to get back to Williamsport? It took hard work because... Since this year at Curacao, we lost a game. We thought we couldn't get back, but I told them, let's go. We're going to Williamsport. Last couple games, you had a major leaguer in the stands watching you, and Jonathan Scope, I know he spoke to the team. What did he say? He said, stay united, play ball, and don't get mad at each other. And Jonathan's not the only one supporting you. The whole country is. What does it mean to have that support back home? It feels good because we know that Curacao, our family, is sustaining us so that we can go out from the big door. Great stuff. Good luck today. Yeah, yeah. Our family, island of about 150,000, they will all be rooting for them today. But they're dealing with Chinese Taipei. They have one kid that's been outstanding, but yesterday their manager said, we have eight different pitchers that are all about as good as Fan. They have a staff, and it's pretty scary because Fan Chen Jin is their ace. In fact, he's their star. You think about what he's done here. And yes, they've got a whole team behind him, but even getting it started with his pitching, I mean, he hit 82 miles an hour. That's 103 in Major League Baseball. You look at the numbers, six and two-thirds innings pitched, 15 Ks, no hits, no runs. He has been absolutely dominant. And oh, by the way, as you see here in Little League, always he can swing the bat. Got them on the board. Huge home run in their first game. Actually was the hardest hit on that side in volunteer. But it's been a staff, as you mentioned. They've got seven others. They are not starting Fan Chen Jin because they have a whole heck of a staff. Some we've never seen pitch here. Well, we've certainly all been excited about what we've seen over the years. Who knows what's about to unfold, but we know we'll have two champions crowned today. to the international championships. The Little League Baseball World Series on ABC is presented by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Look at it. I mean, that is the mighty Susquehanna. And that is Williamsport, Pennsylvania. You come across the river and you're in South Williamsport. And this has been the home of the Little League World Series since 1947. Talk about this Chinese Taipei team and where the kids are from. A big population, 2.2 million. The kids are all basically selected from one school. It's the northwestern part of the island. We can meet the team. It's brought to you by PNC Bank. My name is Lin Wei. I like to eat is My is Wu 
我的名字是邱泽伟，我最喜欢的食物是生鱼片。我的名字是徐兆杰，我最喜欢的歌手是 Lady Gaga。我的名字叫范成俊，最喜欢的食物是鸡肉饭。我是刘安，我最喜欢的球员是周杰伦。我的名字是陈凯森，我最喜欢的运动员是史蒂芬库里。我的名字是吴彦凯，我最喜欢的球队是杨基。我的名字是吴云熙，我最喜欢的球员是大谷翔平。我的名字叫叶青汉，我最喜欢的球队是天使。我叫吴成阳，我最喜欢的动物是企鹅。Thirty first appearance for a team from Chinese Taipei. Their manager right there, Li Chengta. He was here in 2009. They reached the championship game. They lost to California. He said that loss had a profound impact on his life. And now he is back with a new team, and they bring 14 players. So with the new rules in Little League this year, all 14 will bat before we get back to the top of the order for Wun Ying Shi. Starting pitcher today is Helmir Helmiyar, and he is the person we're going to focus on to start. It's brought to you by Dollar Car Rental. There's a reason they went with him. He's a lefty. He will throw a bunch of breaking pitches. And Zino Everett gave a lot of thought to who's going to start. Wheel is available. He's been their best pitcher, but instead he goes with a lefty. Yeah, Zino was talking about a little strategy. He said last time we faced them, Helmiar did a really good job, shut him down. He says this is going to be our guy, and we'll see what happens. So Wu Win Shi's the first baseman. He will lead things off as we are just about set for the first pitch of the international championship game. Good pitch to get him going. That's strike one. This guy, Sean Little League, is making their third trip. They were here in 2009 and 2012. Outfield is fairly deep. Off on the corner. Yeah, first you got to establish that fastball. We know he has a really good breaking ball, but at the same time, establish the corners, then you can use that to be effective. One on one, trying to set up outside for the next one. Hit the glove. One ball, two strikes. Good pitch. You can tell the game plan right away. Really try to stay away. Be able to have pinpoint accuracy, and that's going to be the biggest challenge for Helmier. Two balls and two strikes. Hasn't been a huge offensive performance by the kids from ta Taipei. In fact, Fon is the only one that's hit one over the wall. Curacao, too, has struggled offensively as well. So you figure low scoring game. 2 2. Good pitch caught. That's strike three. The road to the international championship for the kids from Chinese Taipei. Look, the bumpiest part of this was back in the regionals. They haven't had a problem here, but in their regional championship, they lost to a team from South Korea, two to one. And then they went and filed a protest, and they discovered after an intense investigation by Little League, South Korea had used ineligible players. So they had a forfeit, and that is how Chinese Taipei ends up here this year. Yeah, they had only given up one run, Rav, until that point. Outscored their point 64 to 1. 64 to 1. And then they lose 2 to 1 and find out that the team had used some ineligible players. This is Chen Kai Sen. He's the catcher at 5'4, 119. And he's quickly behind 0 oh, 1. Boy, he looks good. Tell you what, the game plans change. All fastballs <laughs> here right out the gate. I said, again, establish that fastball. The equalizer is the curveball. But hey, if they're not hitting it, you got to keep on throwing it. And because he's throwing strikes, Chinese Taipei is a little bit out of their offensive game, which is to be very patient at the plate. Oof, just missed off the corner. They average about four pitches per plate appearance. They have scored nearly half their runs with two outs. And they have been balanced. Five players have three or more runs batted in. One, two. 
Wow, really close pitch. We go two and two. That's probably a fraction off. And there's that patience that we're seeing from Chen Kai Sen. Tell you what, if that's the zone right there, you got to wonder. Pitches will be taken today for sure. Kai Sen, three for five here. He's got a double. And that one's now down, and the count goes full. He has scored four runs, he has driven in four, and he has been on base three quarters of the time. He's got a 750 on base percentage. Han Chen Jin, the left fielder, the big kid that has thrown so well, is on deck. He's got the home run already. And there's a swing and a foul ball. Helmer here, look, kind of got a David Price kind of look to him with the. The hands going over the head, the big leg kick comes out and throws that thing really hard. It kind of lulls you to Where's sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Kapow. The wind here today is blowing out. The sun is shining. There are some clouds. The crowd is tremendous. 3 2, and he got him. Back to back strikeouts to start for Helmier, Helmier. Steady diet of fastballs coming right out the gate. Don't use that off speed yet. A little high cheddar coming right at you. Great start for Helmier. And you couldn't have asked for a better day to come to South Williamsport to watch this Little League World Series. Bottom hill is full. The top hill starting to fill in. And the first pitch to their big power hitter and power pitcher is Fan Chen Jin. He is not the tallest kid on the team. He's not the heaviest kid on the team. At 5'8", 164, he's been the most dominant pitcher. Well, he's strong. I mean, you look at the lower half, and he's grown, too. I mean, just the last six months. In fact, he couldn't find a team that would want him to pitch. That's how much he's changed over the last six months. Yeah, he was, he was hardly the best pitcher at 11. He had no command. That's changed dramatically. Up the middle, on the ground, nope. Wheels kicking it all the way to first, and that won't work. Jalen Wheel on a hard hit ball, had it go off the glove, and it is an error on the shortstop and the first base runner of the day. Yeah, I think on that play right there, it's one of those, the ball was hit hard enough, you could have stayed back just a little bit, kind of got his head over his body. It's like an anchor, when that head goes over, everything else falls into place, and not for the good. Wu Chen Yang is one of the team's extra hitters. And again, in the continuous batting order, you don't have to play the field, you do have to hit. That's a good one in there for a strike, and Helmir is really dealing with that fastball. Yeah, and that's one thing you don't want. If you want this guy, you want Helmer going a long way here. Try and limit as many pitches as possible because those pitch counts can go up high and in a hurry. Back up the middle and played beautifully by Alexander Provasia. Second baseman was deep enough on the grass and a good start for Helmer here. We'll see Curacao for the first time at the plate after this. Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, Curacao is a baseball crazy island. They are all watching today. It's a beautiful island. There have been some major leaguers that certainly have come there. Kenley Jansen starting to really feel the vibe of these kids, this team, and hoping and rooting that they're able to bring home a championship, be their first in a while. See the beautiful waters that they have there as well. Yeah, about 162,000 now call it home, and along with Kenley. Ozzy Albis, Andrew Jones, Jurich and Profar was on the team from 2004. It's 2023 now, let's meet the kids. It's brought to you by PNC Bank. My name is Jay Veri Felicia, my name is Ozzy Albis. My name is Joshua Costa, my name is Joshua Costa, my name is Joshua Costa, my name is Cristiano Ronaldo. My name is Alisha Wanklar, and my name is Joshua Costa, my name is Joshua Costa. My name is Alexander Pavasia Roach, and my comida favorite is pizza. My name is Shomar Sofia Kogos, and my comida favorite is Jurassic Park. My name is Gilles Will, and my comida favorite is Manny Machado. 
Mi nombre es Chancel Verri y mi actor favorito es Tom Cruise. Mi nombre es Nasir El Osais y mi actor favorito es Kevin Hart. Mi nombre es Nathan Hart y mi actor favorito es Martin Lawrence. Mi nombre es Helmi Helmeyer y mi actor favorito es Danilo. Mi nombre es Juan Ramón Ferreras y mi actor favorito es The Rock. Mi nombre es Jaden Lawrence Marty y mi actor favorito es Hugh Jong Marty. Well, this guy has been very, very fired up since he's got here. You'll hear a lot from Dino Everett yeah. as he implores his players to play as well as they can. He's got a unique relationship with the leadoff hitter, Jadlin Wheel, back on his Little League team at home. He and Wheel have been connected at the hip for a long time. He will lead things off. And again, they bring five kids back from last year. Wheel has performed very well. Yeah, they talk about putting him lead off he batted he batted second they want to put more pressure on other teams so we'll see if this bodes well for them he's their leader too sometimes you want to start with that at the top the yo on is the pitcher today for chinese taipei and again in this little league world series 16 innings a run two hits an 042 batting average no leadoff hitter has reached in 16 innings Hi. against the team from chinese taipei none when talked about Yoan yesterday, Lou, he will throw a lot of curveballs too, but we haven't seen any yet. We'll see how that goes here. Two and one. Wheel has home run power. There's the first one, and it's a good one. Two balls, two strikes. Yep, he's gone. That one was down in the dirt. Wheel retired with a strikeout. Well, we've now seen the fastball and the breaking pitch. Yeah, that's really good from 46 feet away. Devastating curveball to start off. Wheel, confidence that Chinese Taipei needs. Comfortable, precise, just fell off the table right there. Nothing you could do. Here's Nasir Elisaz. He's the left fielder. 5'7", 128. That first one bounces away from the catcher, Chen Kai Sen. Biggest goal for Kira Sal batting a buck 90 is put the ball in play. In fact, they took their entire practice, didn't do defense, nothing no. else but hit. Two balls, no strikes. And that's why you're seeing these short swings kind of a, a slash. So showing bunt coming back, and that way you shorten up. They're choking up. Everett has emphasized we have to put the ball in play. They haven't been able to make enough contact this series. But now you're ahead 3-0. and oh. You see the kids all looking around. The stadium is full. And now the hill continues to have people pouring in. The United States game, 3.30 Eastern time, California and Texas. Size 5'7", 128, two Three. balls and a strike. And I see the difference between those last three pitches of this one. Just cruise it in there. Don't overpower. Understand they're not going to swing as of right now and focus on just hitting that glove. That's a ball. He waited to find out what the home plate umpire was going to say. And that is only the fifth time that Chinese Taipei has walked anybody in this Little League World Series. And that brings up their three-hole hitter, Shamar Jacobus, the third baseman. He was here last year. His grandparents made the trip this year. Last year, his parents were here. Just to show how connected these kids are with Major League Baseball. His favorite player is Ellie De La Cruz, of course, the outstanding. Of course, up for the Cincinnati Reds. There are Grandma and Grandpa. Pirates' favorite team, De La Cruz's favorite player. He's the third baseman. And that one's in the dirt, going down to second. Here's your throw. It's to the shortstop side. That's a stolen base for El Saiz. And rare that you've seen these Chinese Taipei pitcher and catcher have balls get away. It's the third one. Just a slight hesitation right here. Ball in the dirt. He takes out. El, El Saiz doesn't care. Let's go. Ball in the dirt. You're taught. Ball in the dirt. Be aggressive. See the. Oh, 
，好，好不好？我们大家轻松一点，去加油，好不好？相信你，你可以的。OK， 好了。Li Cheng Ta asking his kids to smile a little bit, you know, believe in yourselves, have fun, enjoy the moment. Rav, watching them pregame take infield, I've never seen him actually throw the ball around more, meaning making errors. They were making mistakes. They had six go in between their legs. They were nervous. This is the first time they're playing on this field. Kurosaw got to play here two days ago. The count 1 0. Ellis Eyes at second base. Through a fastball high, two balls, no strikes. For Curacao, this Pabao Little League is making their seventh appearance in an international championship game, which breaks a tie with the Kitasuna team from Tokyo. So the most by a single Little League is Curacao crew. Two and oh. Took something off, two and one. What do you make of the sort of bunt look to start the at bat? Yeah, you think your best hitter's up right now. You're going to fake bunt to get a strike. He talked about being aggressive. Right now, they're not being aggressive at all. I don't think this has anything to do with bunting and everything to do with tracking. Yeah. Just literally shorting, shortening up their swing. Nine balls, five strikes. Told you you'd hear Everett most of the game. Three and two. He has said time and time again, the message is always encouraging. Be aggressive. Take your best swings. Paul strike three, and Jacobus never swung. Yeah, it looked like here. Fastball right down the plate. Looking to walk here. I, I'm, I'm confused here. Just for a little bit here. You got your best hitters up. You want to be aggressive. Runner in scoring position. They've seen 16 pitches so far with one swing. That's tough sledding in the first inning. You don't know how many times your big guns are going to get up during the game. And he had said our goal is to be more aggressive. Put it in play. Swing. They have swung one time in 17 pitches. There's been one swing. And they got a runner out there at second after a walk and then a wild pitch, which was the first wild pitch for Chinese Taipei. There's a swing and a good run from Acosta, the center fielder. Joshua's interesting. He is a switch hitter. We saw him the other night start in the right handers batted box, go to the left, switched mid bat. <laughs> After that meeting on the mound, Leo Yo An has been terrific. And looking for another strikeout. There it is. That'll put some smiles on their faces. Wheel strikes out. They get a run in a second. Jacobus and Acosta both go down. Through one inning of play, six innings. It's 0 0. We have been really, really honored to be able to bring it to you. Taipei 3 0, Curacao survives 3 1. Texas hasn't lost, and El Segundo, California's only loss was to Texas, the United States Championship 330. Fraze, who's that right there? That's um, Mighty. Oh, man. Begins with a C. Ends with a Y. Casey. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> man, I got it wrong last time, too. I keep picking that. Carl Stotts out there, man. <laughs> the man that did the whole thing. Unbelievable time. She shall GE, the shortstop. Hey, On the corner, one ball, one strike. One, one. So a couple of strikeouts in the first for Helmier. Helmier. And again, 14 in the batting order. One ball, two strikes. Never know how a 12-year-old is going to react on the mound, let alone in this environment for all of them. And Curacao is loaded. They're all 12 with the exception of one of the players. Uh, go ahead. Helmier, I'm telling you right now, when he throws the ball away, it's 
tailing away when it comes in. It's coming in hard. Very good at deception there. As a right-handed batter, you got to pick one spot, and you got to stick with it to hold that. This will be his 21st pitch here in the second. That looks like GE, the shortstop, is just starting to figure it out a little bit with the speed. Well, this is a Taiwan team that likes to go opposite field. In fact, a lot of their hits middle way, even if they come inside. That's how their swings are set up. You see toes on the line. Heads up. Oh, oh good try. That was a that good, was a good try. effort. Yeah. Yes. Man. That was a good try. You got up. You saw it. That was excellent. Excellent, Fresh. You get, are you getting oh, you're crushed? Getting booed. Yeah, no, you're getting booed. <laughs> Not getting booed. <laughs> Not a Taipei fans are giving me some love on the effort. Man, almost. Good read, though, One, Jess. Two. You and I kind of knew that's his ball. You know, that's his. That's not for us. That's him. We know who takes the lead here. At least on a ball hit to him. I'll tell you right now, he hasn't thrown one curveball. I think if he flips one up right now, would be a really good time for it. Four foul balls. The second baseman, Pavasia, made the play to end the first. He is again about four feet into right on the grass. And that's a foul ball down the third baseline. Defensively, Curacao has been terrific. And they're really big, experienced kids, especially Jacobus there at third base. Wheel is at shortstop, just a confident player. There's Pravasia. Severi is at first. There's a big target over there, which is really helpful. All the fouls, though, get that pitch count up. Here comes the 25th pitch. And that one is in the center field. Fernandez, nice play. Joshua Acosta Fernandez is there for the out. Great read, and there was a slight hesitation because it's off the end of the bat at his ankles. But Joshua, you see him kind of read it, and then it dies, almost like a two seam just going down. Joshua Acosta Fernandez follows that beautifully. You mentioned it, Rav. The defense has been one of the best things Curacao has done. Another one of the extra hitters for Chinese Taipei is Ye Chin Han. Big kid, 5'9", 161. That one misses down and away. Chinese Taipei has been terrific in Williamsport. 17 overall Little League World Series titles. Ball. And that one is down. Nearly half of all the titles won by international teams have been won by Chinese Taipei. But they have not won at all since 1996. And in fact, they haven't been at the championship game since 2009. Falls behind here, three balls and no strikes. But as dominant as this pitching staff has been, the 1973 team didn't allow a hit the entire World Series. That's, Not one hit. That's pitching right there, in a nutshell. I, mean, I love the pitching, but it does <laughs> yeah, not make for That would not have games. been a Mendoza <laughs> Little League World Series. No. Nope. <laughs> Big young. Three and O. Oh. Second base runner for Chinese Taipei and the first walk for Helmier. Would you like your child to experience the teamwork and fun of Little League baseball or softball? Visit playlittleleague.org and enter your address to find a Little League community program near you. DJ Jablonski leading the charge. Texas in the house. California, of course, getting some swings in. There's big number 19. That's Lewis Lappy. He's got the three homers. Missing part of uh, his start to seventh grade while he's here. Lin Wei Hong next up. On the corner, strike one. One of the smaller guys here at the Little League World Series, but he swings a big bat, man. Watch the swing, watch the, the tilt he gets on his backside, drives the ball the other way with the best of them. Four nine, 74 pounds. He likes steak, too. You are wondering if there was going to be a bunt there, and he pushed it foul. Lean meat, he's eating 74 pounds. 
the outer skirts. Exactly. Or two bites. <laughs> so the outfield's moved in a little bit. Frey says this guy's got a lot of pop in that bat. One out, one on. Just underway in the international title game. He's hitting about 500, too. And small strike zone. He's got a great eye. Right on top of the yeah, plate. Yeah, and his toes are creeping <laughs> right over the batter's box line. Imagine the target you have. He's 4'9". He's over the plate. And this one is to the shortstop wheel. He will throw to first. It will not be in time. Look at the stretch from Severy over there. He went full split. <laughs> that may have hurt him a little bit, but he went full split. Almost looped one in there to right field. Backdoor throw. Mm. Very nice. Chai Yen Hao. I like the David Price comp. He's got a good finish, too, and he's pretty imposing as far as size goes on the mound. You get length, you throw him from 46 feet, but with him, with his arm length, maybe around 40. Yeah, 5 foot 10 inches tall. One ball, one strike. Last year, team from Hawaii was so dominant, they really took away from a lot of the competitiveness that we have had this year in the Little League World Series. A little more parity and a lot more enjoyable games. Haven't been too many blowouts. That one's popped out. A lot of one-run games, Rav. A lot of them. I mean, coming down to the final strike. Curacao had one of those against that's, Venezuela. That's all Curacao plays. When they win, they win one-run games. Sun-kissed Lomity Stadium. The count goes two balls and two strikes. Defense behind him has been very solid. That wheel error on that hard hit ball from Fan Chen Jin has really been it. 2-2 on the ground of the second baseman. Pravasu will have to come in a few steps, but that was smooth, and he's made a couple of good plays. They've had two on. They haven't gotten a hit yet in this presentation of Little League. The World Series continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back. Talk about some of those Major League connections to these Little Leaguers, and Jonathan Scope, of course, played for the Homestad Curacao crew, the Pablo Little Leaguer. And, of course, went on to a Major League career where we see him with the Tigers. He, of course, was outstanding with the Baltimore Orioles, and right now he is with Sebastian Salazar. Guys, from pictures of Jonathan Scope to drawings of Jonathan Scope, Jonathan, can you show me what you got here? Ah, uh, let me see. Show the camera, show the camera. This one. <laughs> And I got this one. <laughs> and who made these? Where is he? It's a, it's a little kid. Where is he? One of the young men just. Why is he on my team? Uh, uh, yeah, young fan just came by and dropped them off. I know. I know. Todd thinks he's a big deal around Williamsport, but I don't know if people are drawing pictures of you up there, <laughs> Frazier. All right, so Jonathan, what's it like to be back? Uh, it was fun. It's fun to be back and watch those guys, you know, in the international final. And so far, so so good. Now we're gonna score a run, so we can go ahead. You say fun, but the other day you were telling me about the nerves. You're sweating up here a little bit. Yes, I'm sweating. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Like the, the yesterday too, two, two days ago, I was so nervous with the kids. You know, thank God we put it off. And today we 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 we're gonna play a good baseball and and call victory. And it's a chance for you, obviously, to be around the kids a little bit. I know you've had an opportunity to talk to them. What's that like for you? That was good. It was good to talk with them, especially the day they lost against um, this team. I thought, you know, like shake it off. You know, um, you guys lost today, but. Forget about it and concentrate for the next game, and you guys are gonna see them again. And when you guys see them back, 
make make them pay. So let's let's see what's gonna happen today. I see that uh, WhatsApp of yours is blowing up. I know everybody back in Curacao, all the big leaguers from Curacao are texting you. What are they telling you? Are they following along? Yeah, of course, of course. Well, they all follow. We all follow. Even you know, you know, here you follow the whole island, the, the big leaguers. They all follow it, you know. And you know, they told um, it's it's nice to be there to to support those guys, and they they wish they was here too. It's a real tight knit community, and you've known Zeno Everett here, the manager, forever. Tell us a little bit, a bit about him. Forever, I know this guy forever. You know, like look at him um, today. He come with a different, different style and, and, and put pressure on them. You know, and 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 trying to put pressure on those guys and and see if we can score runs. Or not. And of course, the bats have been pretty silent here. You got you got any thoughts on kind of what could lead to a to a quick start here for the guys from Coursa? Oh, that's why you see, like the bat is uh, uh, starting a little bit slow. But you see what you try to do? Trying to make them slash and trying to make the pitch throw strikes and and put more guys on base and, and put more pressure, you know, and so far I think it's working so far. But now we're going to capitalize and, and, and score a run. All right, guys, we'll send it back up to you as Jonathan has a, a close eye on his countrymen here. All right, here's one on the shortstop, and Chow Che is there to make the play. It's a ball in play, and the shortstop able to get it done. Speaking of major leaguers, of course, we mentioned Kenley Jansen, he of the Boston Red Sox. So Justin Turner sends out a tweet about Kenley, which says, I've, I've never seen him as nervous as he just was for the last two outs watching the Little League World Series. Kenley, so much pride. And, and Jonathan said it perfectly, how many of these big leaguers the entire country. But when you're talking, especially World Baseball Classic, Little League Classic, it is on in the clubhouse. So I love Justin Turner captured that moment. Kenley Jansen locked in right now. Along those lines, I've been getting hit up by Dita Gregorius talking about how good this team is, how excited he said he would have came. But he has some things doing in his own country there. So it is a very, very nice build of what they have over there in Curacao. 2 0, Sean Severy, he's their first baseman. And it's now 3 0. Hey, look, we have the Philadelphia Phillies here against the Washington Nationals. And when you see the major leaguers walk in, and as we look forward to next year, the New York Yankees and the Detroit Tigers will be here. That connection between those guys and these kids is very real. And they're dealing with all sorts of things that these kids thankfully don't have to deal with. A lot of it has to do with the benefits of being a major leaguer, like the money. But with that comes pressure and anxiety and uh, disgruntled fans. You come here and you kind of get to wipe all that away for one day, one night. And you are arms open, embraced by all these kids. I don't blame somebody like Scope or anyone else for wanting to come here and just kind of immerse yourself in what what baseball was all about and why you got into it in the first place. Yeah, and there's a lot of watch parties going on at Curacao as we've talked before. People there are very excited and they love their Curacao Little Leaguers. This is Deshaun Winkler. He is one of those five that was here last year. Here's one to the shortstop. To the second baseman to first and stumbling over first base is Winklar. GE and Jin turned it really well. But Winklar's a little too quick. And he'll be at first. Yeah, one of the first hard hit balls we've seen from Curacao today. One hopper right at the shortstop. Nice play. Better feed. He might have had a double play there. Well, they are putting the ball in play this inning. A couple of ground balls to the shortstop. And here comes the catcher, another big guy here, Jaden Lorenz Marti. Five foot four, 177. Brothers playing baseball in the Netherlands. What a good block there by Chen Kai Shang. The Dutch major leagues. these hitters just on the plate and Todd it's 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 incredible too. you think about the pitcher the zone they've got to hit. Yeah and the matter the fact of the matter is they're taking until they get a strike we're seeing this through every batter whether it's a fake bunt or what they want to do they're taking until they get a strike and then they go after it. <laughs> Oh, 
，下一个，好，加油啊！哎，突破好，好，扫起啊！ Brings the entire team in. I mean, all the outfielders, the infielders, the catcher. Talk about baseball's popularity in Curacao. Certainly in the area that these kids are from, Chinese Taipei, it's baseball. And then it's swimming, track and field. Dodgeball is also yes. very popular. <laughs> I love it. Ben Stiller must be wildly popular over there, then. Huge. And the Ocho. And the Ocho. Get a little shoe tie down there at first base. Oh, he's got one. <laughs> <laughs> The next one to Jaden. That's down. Interesting that it was Winkler tying his shoe because he had said during his interviews before the tournament started, last year he liked to clean. He acknowledged that. And this year he's become tired of cleaning. <laughs> so he's given that up. <laughs> Tw Typical 12 years old, 12. we're shutting it down. <laughs> Done enough cleaning in my life. For the best coverage in the cam, Let's check out the T-Mobile ump cam. Another one down. Oh, called strike. Wow, three and two. Low pitch to Jaden Lorenz Marti. Zino not too happy about that one at third base. Had to take a walk. That was better, too, and that is a strikeout. The 3-1 pitch changed the at-bat. Lorenz Marti is gone. We're through two, it's still 0-0. What a day, and what a day to welcome our Sunday night crew to the Little League World Series. Washington Nationals have arrived. Phillies have touched down here as well. This is where the major leaguers come in here and all of a sudden see the kids in them. Is that your shortstop going down the hill? That is my knucklehead, yeah. <laughs> it's really cool to be here again and the guys and girls go out there and play hard. This one is into center field and they're going nuts on the media side. They all have a dream and they just need to keep that alive and believe in themselves. Nationals and Phillies have been incredibly gracious with their time, their patience, signing autographs. I'm coming out here and hanging out, enjoying it. So many great kids, big smiles, laughs. I mean, everybody's happy and ready to go, and it's filled with dreams for kids. And now we change the roles as we get set to watch big league baseball. Atmosphere here, can't even describe it. It's electric. You can tell that I like food, I love to eat. Of course, the, the post-game snow cone, right? Win or lose, heading straight to the snack shack. Seeing the energy and the emotion that's in those stadiums for those kids, it was just fantastic. Williamsport, Pennsylvania, it's put on a show here this Sunday. Yeah, it sure did. Great recap of the Phillies visit with the Nationals. An amazing scene seeing the Phillies cheer for the Little Leaguers from media. And this Sunday, we'll go from Williamsport to San Francisco Oracle Park. The Braves, who got a win last night, Spencer Strider picked up his 15th win of the year. They beat the Giants 5-1 San Francisco in a wild card battle with, well, with Philadelphia, Arizona, Chicago, the what? Giants, Reds, Marlins. K-Rod cast the ESPN2, and you can watch it at 7 Eastern Baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown at 6 will kick things off. Really a magical day, and it's funny because people like Schwarber had been here before. Bryce Harper, first time, got chills. You can hear, hear him talk about that. And when he spent some time up here with us, got very emotional about, you know, his his life and the lifestyle of a major league player. If you're around all these kids, you see these families together, you know, he missed his children. Yeah. He acknowledged that. No, he, he got super emotional. And I appreciated him talking about how raw all of this can yep. make you. Now 3-0 leadoff hitter. And a significant development out there in the Chinese Taipei bullpen. Fan Chen Jun is now throwing. He is the overpowering right hander with a fastball that has topped 80 miles an hour several times and a slider that is unhittable. Now a leadoff walk here to on Sebi. Thanks, Carl. I've got Lo Wa Ling, who told me she, I can call her Carrie and Ben Blake Johnson here. It's a Little League World Series friendship store you didn't know you needed. Now, 
Carrie, tell me a little bit, because she's kind of the team mom, right? A lot of the parents couldn't make the trip, so she does the laundry, she's making the clothes. How does it feel for you to be here? I'm very, very excited, and I'm so happy, I'm so lucky. And Ben here, how long have you known Ben? About uh, 13 years. 13 years, okay, so let's get the backstory there. How did you guys meet 13 years ago? So this this started 2010 World Series, and I was I love Taiwan. I was I was sitting next to the VIPs, ran into Carrie, ran into some other VIPs, and they they brought me in the fold. VIP passes. They come back every year. I come back every year, and we we run it back every year. And how old are you now? 24. So you've been doing it every year since you since, were 11. Since I was about half this height. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I know you get the the chance started down here in this section as well. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You want me to run one? I want you to run one. Yeah. Let's get them going. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Taiwan! 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 There you go, Carl. Plenty of vibes as we uh, take a look. Oh, and there's the photo from, from 11 years ago. How about that? A whole different kid back then. Yeah, a lot, lot less worries. Just coming here, hoping they win, you know. <laughs> yes. But still the same same guy, same story. Hey, and what was it about this team that kind of drew you in at first? It was it was, uh, it was was either 08 or 09 World Series. They played the Chula Vista team from the West team. And I wanted them to win. Unfortunately, we lost a close one, 6-3. to three, but I love I'm, how my man says we. <laughs> yeah, I do. You know, But I'm drawn to these kids. They got great attitude, super friendly. They just they want to play ball. They just want to play baseball, and, and, you know, we love being here to support them. Awesome. Great stuff. Guys, we send it back up to you. That one just missed. Wasn't that the Ramirez family, that Chula Vista team? And we had Max and Luke. One was a coach, one was a player. You talk about power hitters. That dude could absolutely smash the baseball. I believe that was the Chula Vista team from 2009. Kind of how Cali rolls, yeah. Rav. Oh, here we go. Frey's two and two count. That's a strike. And a big strike out first one of this inning. And with one down and one on, Lee E. Jin coming up. Kind of lulled him to sleep there. Fastball, fastball, and then right on the knees. Got to be looking for that heater right down the plate. Outside of Lee Jin, one thing that Helmier and Jaden Lorenz Marti, his catcher, have done a nice job of is they have not allowed a ball to get past and a runner to advance. A little later, we'll see Texas and California. Texas has feasted on the base paths. Six sort of stolen bases, and that's been a big part of their attack. It's been so fun. You talk about the mix of U.S. teams. There hasn't been a dominant team. You see them win a variety of different ways. Texas with their speed pitching. California, we talked a lot about the power and the home runs. We've seen right now the patience from Taiwan. These at bats. 2-0, Lai Yi Jin getting set. He's the second baseman. Right down the middle. 51st pitch for Helmier. Nobody warming for Curacao. We saw Fawn warming for Chinese Taipei. And now we'll see Fawn come back to the dugout. Tell you what, Helamir, when he gets in trouble, as you see in these innings, he just finds a way to throw strikes. Body language is great. Throwing the ball hard. Not really throwing that off speed too much as we thought he was going to do in the beginning of the game. Pinpoint control. And sometimes when he gets away, he hones it in. Not throwing so hard. Finding that glove Two, is where they need to be. One. Another good one right at the knees. Tough for a lefty, man. You put yourself in his position with that big hit on the mound. He's right up on the plate. That's a nod to Tim Kirkshin. Frazier, what's the count? Twos. With a lean to the right. Uh. This one to center field. Costa Fernandez is there and an easy can of corn for him. There are two down.
Nothing magical about it. Just throwing those fastballs. And guess what? He's keeping them off balance. Hitting his spots. And just finding ways to get guys out. He's got a couple strikeouts here. He's got three strikeouts, but let the defense work. Shows you way, one of the extra hitters. And again, all 14 bat before we get back to the top of the order. It's a fastball on the inside corner. Gosh, it just comes in there quick because you see that wind up, how slow the leg kick. Starting to see the timing. A lot of late swings. A lot of takes. From both teams. I was going to say, yeah. too many. We're going to get a special pinch runner here. It's interesting, too, Helmier guys, one of the questions that all the little leaguers are asked is if you won the lottery, what would you do with the money? Helmer on the mound, he wants to buy Aruba if he wins the lottery. <laughs> just, just go out. <laughs> just go out and buy it. Just buy it. I mean, you live in Curacao. You're already in one of the most beautiful countries you could be in. But let's have two. Let's go. Nope. He wants Aruba, too. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> Ball. And obviously from the different side, but his favorite pitcher is Kenley Jansen. And again, here you go with his favorite team being the New York Yankees. Well, uh -oh. Jansen sits there as a Red Sox. Ball. I love Jaden behind the plate. Like there, there's a, you know, there's a little bit of a lead over at first. We've seen a lot of guys throw behind the runner. He, he just looks down there and throws it back to the pitcher. Not worried about what you're doing over there. Have at it. <laughs> you can do your dance moves, whatever you right. want. Two, Getting it back to my pitcher. Two and one, two down. We're in the third inning of the international championship game. Ball. And now three and one. Hasn't been a base run of the second base in this one for Chinese Taipei. They have had a base run run in every inning. And hard to imagine if Fawn is going to come into this game, just given what he's done so far, that Curacao is going to be able to amass much of an offense. So one run could be very much the difference in this game. And now they will have runners at first and second base. Here's, here's your chance, Jess, when they're not swinging the bat too often, you finally get a run to second Damn base. Concentrate Bom, tranquil, saca out, concentra que dem pa mi, concentra. Bom, é gai que da lens. Lens o marco bati bui. Heard the word tranquil in there. Calm down, everybody breathe a little bit. Dino is really obviously passionate and he's going to be around for a while. He told us yesterday. Well, he's got a little capibu. baby at home who's one and he he plans on taking him to the Little League World Series as a player. That's so cool. So I know it's intending on being here at least the next 11 years as the coach. Xi Pin Hong now with a chance. The right fielder. Strike one. Yeah, speaking Papi Mentu and so impressive. So many things about these kids, but for Curacao, speaking four languages. Yeah. Between Papi Mentu and Dutch, Spanish. Mandatory too. They said it's mandatory in their schools. I love every second about that. Again, second baseman Provasi a deep. Ball. That one missed a little bit high. You know, balls in play. Jess Fraze, you roll one to the second baseman. It's going to be a hit. You'll have the bases loaded because he's so deep. But you got to swing the bat. Yep. A lot of taking going on today. Yeah, right. That's been Taiwan's game too. They have more walks than strikeouts. The only team here that has that. 
we know on the U.S. side, we've seen some swingers. I mean, there's been a lot of Ks taking your hacks. Not so much in this one. Crowd on the hill, anxious to see a little action here, and it is a fabric of colors out there. Great view right there of what it looks like over the shoulder of the pitcher. Helmier delivers again, that's high, and now it's two balls and two strikes. Marti wondering if his foot's too far off in the batter's box. Again, these guys are right on the plate. All you got to do is have a piece of your foot on that white line. It looks like half and half right now. Anything inside the strike. Marti almost looks around the hitter. On the ground to wheel. That time he makes the play, and he'll step on the bag. And get out of it. They got two men on. When we come back, will we see the ace of Chinese Taipei? Hope you're enjoying ABC's coverage of this Little League World Series presented by T-Mobile. Todd Frazier. Little League World Series champion back in 1998 and the Olympic silver and gold medalist Jessica Mendoza along with Sebastian Salazar. I'm Carl Ravitch earlier today. One of the great events of the Little League World Series, the Challenger Division game. A couple of teams, one from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, sliding home, and Syracuse, New York also on hand with a lot of the Little Leaguers out there to go and support the boys and girls. It chills every time you so see it. Good. And good for the kids to go out there and support the Challenger Division of Little League Baseball. Little League International does such a great job supporting all kids, boys, girls, challenger division, and they get a chance to play on the field here as well. Not back for Hel Mier, and the first pitch misses from the Yo, Yo On. So no Fong Chen Jun yet. He's still in left field. You guys agree with that, right? Yes, absolutely. 100%. They, they want to save him for tomorrow, obviously, but they definitely want to put him in when there's a lead. Haven't been any hits yet either, so he's in pitching fine. Yeah, that's a tough one to be taken out when you haven't given up a hit. And there really hasn't been a lot of hard contact, if any. And swings. <laughs> or swings. But in a 0-0 game, one big swing changes everything. Ouch. Oh, that one hit him, I believe, too, after a swing. So that's a strike. <laughs> I remember when Chris Sale was pitching to me one time. That ha almost happened to me. Slider. Coming in, looking good, and then, boom, back heel. Yep. So the slider is filthy, and Yuan deals again, and another good one, and that does it for Elmer. College football season is kicking off tonight. The 18th annual BX SWAC Challenge kickoff game, South Carolina State, Jackson State. Center Park Stadium in Atlanta, our celebration of HBCUs begins at 7.30 Eastern on ABC for the first time and the ESPN app. The hallways around the worldwide leader starting to get full of the college football guys. Uh, Herb Street, of course, Reese Davis there. McAfee, Desmond, college game day roaring back. Oh, the Dame is playing where? They're, they're off in Ireland over right there, yeah. Gets Navy. Late call, Juan Plato Ferreras. He has been on the mound here. He's no longer eligible to pitch because of the pitch count rule, but he's probably the hardest thrower for Curacao. And he's ready on a 1-1. Tried to bunt there. It's one ball, two strikes. He did offer at that. I think there's a point in time in this game where you got to let loose and say, guess what? If you get a fastball in the strike zone, forget about fake bunt. We're going to have to hit our way to win this game. So far, it hasn't worked. 1-2. Plato, ooh, that is right over the heart of the plate. He tried to, he tried to back out of the way of it, but it was right over the plate. Six punch outs for Yuan. Watch the front foot too of Ferreras. I mean, he's about to step on the plate. That's how much he's out of the box. Yeah, exactly. And so he reacts like it's going to hit him, but that's a strike. The old. ESPN compound is right where that drone lifted off from. And now you see beautiful Lomity Stadium 
walk down the stairs, and that's where we are right now. And another good start here against Javeri Felicia. And that ball to right center. Wei Hong diving oh, yeah. catch. How about the two center fielders today? They have shined. And that was Lin Wei Hong. Lin Wei Hong, one of the smaller guys we talked about on this Taiwan team. Coming in, went back first, what you're supposed to do, came back in. Mm. Beautiful dive. That will be a top 10 play today. Chinese Taipei coming up in the fourth. Let's see if we get some hits from both sides. It is brought to you by Geico. Yuan and Helmier have been outstanding on the mound. A few balls that have been put in play. Seen a couple of good defensive plays. Acosta Fernandez in center field for Curacao and just a couple of minutes ago, Lin Wei Hong with a diving catch. 14th man in the order, and then back to the top. And that one sails all the way to the backstop. Wu Yang Kai, he's an extra hitter. He's 5'4, 116. Ball, one strike. Ravi, you feel like this is a big batter before they get to the top of the order here. If you can get him on and vice versa, if you can get him out, that is a huge plus for both sides. Fong Chen Jun is fourth up in this inning. Right back up the middle, fielded beautifully by Helmier. Boy, that's a big body, and it felt like a big glove, like the baseball got swallowed by the glove. All about reaction here. That's all it was. Get that long arm down there. All you got to do is knock it down. Between the legs? Yeah, just funnel that thing in there. That's a base hit if it gets through. Top of the order. And Wu Yin Shi, he struck out his first time up. In fact, we started the game with Helmer getting both the first and second here's with strikeouts. Good swing. Second time through the order. Come oh, here. Added a little velo on that one. Oh, here you the go. Bat. Yeah, a little bat switch. Let's drop it down a couple ounces. I love Shanghai out there, the third base coach. He's just, listen, quiet, stoic. He gets respected by all these guys. He wants your bat switch. You're going to switch that bat, big man. <laughs> Don't know if that's the home run bat or that's a double bat. We'll see what happens here. Contact bat, maybe. On the infield, this is going to be trouble. Fielded and look out, three Curacao players bang into each other. Jacobus is the one to pick it up. And I don't know, Todd, if you thought that one may have spun foul. You could tell it was going to be trouble if it stayed fair. It was going foul. It had the spin. That's the in-between bat. Not too hard, not too soft. Yeah, it had an opportunity to go foul. Three guys going after it at one there. The first knock for Chinese Taipei and both teams. And barring a double play, we'll see Fawn Chen Jun, the big home run hitter. This is the two hitter, Chen Kai Sun. And this one on the infield too. Wheel diving, can't get it, but he's got the play at second base. And he will make it there. Great effort by Wheel. And easy force out at second. Going all out for your team here. Two in between swings, basically in the middle of no man's land. Good dive by Wheel. Knock it down. That could have been scary if it hit a different part of his glove, could have ricocheted. But ultimately, you're trying to get the one out there. Nothing you can do at first base if you're the runner. Wheel cleaning off. That's a hard day's work already. And we are just in the fourth. Tie the shoe. I just love the effort, guys. I mean, the fact that he just lays out, and it's a perfect time to do it because he's right by second base, holds the runner anyway. Just right under the belly button, no big thing. Nope, and he had the awareness to get on the bag, but here is Fan Chen Jun. Oof, that's foul on the right field line. He probably has the hardest hit ball. It was that ground ball to 
wheel at shortstop that he was unable to pick up. One thing you do not want to do here is get him extended. Yeah. That last pitch right there, if his timing was right, we could have seen a 2 nothing ball game. Find a way to get in on him. If he gets too far in, it's okay. His manager said he was hitting homers at the age of 11, but not pitching very well. He's got a homer here already. That is a strike at the letters 0 and 2. Outfield deep, wind blowing a little bit out towards center. Look at Pavasi out there giving himself some space <laughs> at second base. I like that. He's quick, he's got great hands, some of the best hands in the Little League World Series. 0 oh, 2. Swing and a miss. Woo! What a job by Helmir. Pull that ball back. Another big punch out for Helmir. On Chen, done. We got one hit in the game, and here comes Curacao in the bottom of the fourth. Dos bolas, dos strikes con el base bashi. Pitcher de clara, lanzamiento. The swing conectando batazo alto. Alto. Es aquí sí. Es aquí sí. Yes, a beautiful call on the home run from Wheel earlier. Sebi, what do you got? Wow, I got the man who made the call, Andy <laughs> Martina of Deporte Activo Live Radio. I pulled him off his broadcast, has to have a word with us. So what was going through your head when Jalen Wheel hit that monster shot the other day? For me, it was great because um, that guy is a great hitter, great baseball player. He is uh, tremendous for the team, and he was calling it. He was calling it that in Puerto Rico, he will get one, two, and three, but in Williamsport, he will get one. So you've been, it. you've been coming here for a long time, right? 2016 was your first trip to Williamsport. What do you think of this event? This event is great. I was here 2016, 2019, 22, and this year. Every year, great, great event. And how many people are following back home? At back home, we have followers, have much, much followers. Yeah. We have followers um, listening to the radio, also at the broadcasting that we have on the Facebook page, the Protective Life. Everything, everybody's listening. All right, guys, we're going to get it back up to you, and we're going to let Andy go back to work here on uh, Press Row in Papiamento. They're not the only crew from Curacao. we got another crew as well. Shows you just how much interest there is back home. Well, there's a lot more interest now. We have our first hit. Jadlin Wheel delivers a wow. single, and it was against Fon Chen Jun has come in to face the top of the order. The most dominant pitcher, and two pitches, two swings from Wheel. What a foul ball, what a single. Talk about in a bat, too. I mean, as soon as Fon Chen Jun came out of the dugout, he's coming into this game. You knew the perfect batter was Jalen Wheel to face him. Yeah, to think right now, run around first, trying to bunt here. I think that's going to be very hard to do. We'll see the strategy they're going to go with right now. How dominant has Fon been? He has thrown now 88 pitches. Players had made contact 15 times. That's it. So now it's 17 times in 88 pitches. That's more like it for him, like 77 miles an hour. 12 times he has thrown a pitch over 80, which is about 106 miles an hour. And to see her Ellis they're swinging at him. It's amazing, they're swinging at this guy and hadn't swung at all. This you, is who they prepared to face. Uh oh, oh boy. Oh. 78 mile an hour fastball foul back results in this oh boy now reverse exit velo that's that's backing it up real quick Ernie how are we doing down there mm. no bueno oh, right off the knuckles too I love how aggressive they are now to Rab to your point. But remember, we met with them yesterday and they were all prepared to face Chen Jun. That was exactly what they had talked about. They were disappointed when he wasn't starting. Yeah. And the question you wonder now, how many pitchers pitches will he throw? Is this just to get through the top? Throw uh, 20 so you're eligible to pitch tomorrow or not? But here's the resume for this Little League World Series. So. 
You have the 12 pitches at 80 or faster from 46 feet away. So imagine the reaction time. 100 plus mile an hour pitches. And maybe that's the answer that this is a 20 pitch outing for him. Jalen Wheel, your Major League Baseball comparison would be Kenley Jansen. And how about for Fawn? Yeah, Jacob DeGrom. Okay. A little fastball slider. Both unhittable until Jalen Wheel delivers. He's the first leadoff batter in an inning to reach against Chinese Taipei. It's the first hit that Fawn has given up. And they've really worked on it. You guys can break it down better than me, but they've really worked on how tight his delivery is. It used to be kind of hands and arms all over the place. He is really tight to his body. It has helped him immensely with his control and his command. Yeah, yeah when talking to um, the manager yesterday, he explained they had targets. They would make small targets. They'd make bigger targets for him when he was 11 going on 12 to understand that, listen, you got to have control. If you don't have pinpoint control, doesn't matter how fast you throw. Only so strong. So it was minimized movement. You don't need the big high leg kick. That's what he used to have. To be able to use your body in a compact way, we've seen a huge difference. They said even just a few weeks ago, in fact, South Korea, you talked about they lost yeah. in regionals. They hit scored runs off of him. Now the camera's now been uh, cleaned up, a little emergency operation, but this is what it sounded like. Oh. <laughs> That's like on the boardwalk at the Jersey Shore, win a prize. <laughs> Kudos to Ernie, man. Ooh, he's right down there working that camera. I'll make a flinch. Ernie, you look great. Now we are just about set here again. So they've moved the third baseman in. Wheel does have good wheels there at first base if a pitch were to get by Kaisen. A little check swing, blooper, it's into right field. Wheel will put the brakes on, and wow, Curacao two for two against Fon Chen Jun. Wheel and Ellisize both reach. Tell you what, all it takes is to touch it. That's what, a, yep. that's what Zino said. Listen, we got to put the ball in play. We got to find ways to square the ball up. They did without even swinging on that one. Man, it goes to show you how hard he really is throwing. I mean, 40%, 50% swing, found grass. Well, this is a bit of a startling revelation. They're going to have him try to start throwing the ball away, but consider not only was Fawn outstanding on the mound, the opposition had just two hits against Chinese Taipei in 57 plate appearances. He comes on, they're two for two. They've matched the total number of hits they had given up with two batters, and this is the three-hole hitter in a 0-0 game, Shamar Jacobus. It's like a modified wheel play Chinese Taipei is doing. Jin Yu at third base is way in. Xiao Jie way over as well. That one dropped and wheel going to third. He's there. And they have a runner at third base. Nobody out. But you wonder, you know, Lu on the third baseman, was coming halfway down, and when Kai Seng, the catcher, got it, was he in his way? Is that why he didn't throw it? No, nah, uh, it, it looks like it, but still, great read by Wheel right there. Next pitch, ball down. They give Wheel a stolen base. Curacao, real chance to break through here. Ninth pitch is about to be thrown by Fon Chen Jun. 79, a little higher in velocity. How about Chen Kai Sheng, the catcher, to be able to catch these balls? 
good swing. This is a, is this a classic example of velocity? It doesn't bother the major leaguers. It doesn't bother a 12 year old. <laughs> no, I don't know how it does. It would bother me. <laughs> this ball is coming in hot. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Two and two. Ball. Oh, that missed. Three balls, two strikes. Another 79 mile an hour fastball. You gotta remember though, this is what they prepared for. This is all they worked on yesterday. Brought the pitching machines in close, cranked them up. Good swing. Took a little bit off that. Grandma and Grandpa here at this trip with Shamar Jacobus. What an opportunity they have here. Last year it was mom and dad. This year, Grandma and Grandpa. Wheel family, man, they are enjoying all of this. He's down there at third base. The go-ahead run. Swing and a miss. Jacobus is gone. Big time power from Fon Chen Jun. Here it is. If you can hit it, go right ahead. Couple foul balls. Raise the ladder a little bit. You go up top on close to 80 miles an hour. Have the fun swinging at that one. The infield in the middle is back. Chinese Taipei has not scored a lot of runs. You think they would really want to cut this run down, and Acosta fouls off the first one. Yeah, they put this in play. It was a good chance they score a run. Right. Chinese Taipei almost giving into that run or trying to go for the double play. Elosas has not shown any indication to run at first base. This punt is good. Here comes Wheel. He's safe. Curacao's ahead. One to nothing. And the oh. ball thrown away. Here comes Edelsides. Oh, it's 2 nothing Curacao. Jess, you talked about it. The defense earlier today during infield outfield wasn't the best. This is what got them there. Pitching and defense kind of falling apart here. Beautiful bunt, got it down. Jin Yu got the ball. No play at home. Should have got the out at first, and then things compiled. Wow. The bunt was terrific. And then there was some indecision, home or first. They came home with it, and that was the mistake. The beautiful part was just getting it down and forcing them to have to come across their body to throw it home, and none able to make the play. That's the mistake, the second half of that, for two runs to score. This was Curacao's goal, is if we can take the lead, put pressure, they've never been behind. Two errors charged on the play. Two runs in. Provasia. And that ball, boy, what a job by Kai Sheng. But they brought in the ace to keep it at zero, and it's now at two. Incredible catching there by Kai Sheng. High to Provasia. And I can hear Zino Everett telling everybody, all you got to do is put the ball in play. Good things can happen. He told us that all meeting yesterday. And they have been very different in this inning with the hardest throwing guy at the tournament. They come to life. I mean, this was a team that didn't even want to swing. They were striking out, looking, taking over and over again. Then they get the dude, the ace on the mound, and they're like, here we go, here we come. And you think the overpowerment would have got him. Two singles. This will be the 20th pitch. Yep, that's strike three. And Fawn maybe thought that was the third out. It's only the second, and now do we take him out? Hope we can score enough runs to win it and make him eligible for tomorrow. And it looks like that is what the manager is considering doing, Li Chang Ta. Wow, Curacao. Wheel got it all started with a single between third and short. And to think the strategy of using him in this fourth inning against their best hitters. They didn't bunt this time. They put the ball in play. Curacao. They advanced last year by beating Chinese Taipei in the international championship game. They are trying to do the same thing today. 
And then they are going to try, if they win, to smash the whole thing to pieces and win the Little League World Series. California's reaction to all of this. They're playing next against Texas. Oh, boy. Welcome back to ABC's coverage of this Little League World Series presented by T-Mobile. 2023 Little League World Series is certainly going to be remembered as the year of Fawn. He was outstanding on the mound for Chinese Taipei, shattering velocity records, throwing over 80 miles an hour. But today, fascinating. It almost like an alarm bell went off in the Curacao dugout, and they woke up when he came in. And he has given up two runs on two hits in Curacao in what was a hitless game, now has a 2-0 lead. Here in the bottom of the fourth inning, new pitcher is Shozu Wei. And Sean Severi now at the plate for Curacao. And that's pop foul. I wonder what the reaction of Curacao was when they realized that Vaughn wasn't starting the game. And how motivating it was maybe to either see him or not see him. I went down there and asked. I was like, all right, you don't got the big dude. And they were furious. Hmm. They were already looking ahead to tomorrow is the way they saw it. <gasps> they All they did was prep. I mean, they told us in their meeting, we're ready to face Chen Jun. That's all we know. 80 miles an hour, crank up the machines. And when they found out he wasn't going, it made him mad. Okay. Jaden Wheel has gone down to the Curacao bullpen. That one is tugged wide. There is a runner on second base. There are two down. That's Joshua Acosta. He got the bunt down. One thing we know, Zaino will not stop talking. <laughs> this ball to center field. Wei Hong is right there. And how about it? Who would have thought they'd bring Fawn in, the most dominant pitcher? Curacao's bats come to life. They jump out to a 2-0 lead through four. Texas, California coming up next. That is the United States Championship game. They are sitting just below and behind home plate here. Underneath, watching the game. And uh, giving a little applause for a Chinese Taipei player or two that just walked by. Uh, here comes the great team from Needville, Texas, about 40 miles outside of Houston, the Southwest against the West. Helmier, Helmier continues to pitch the lefty, and he pours a strike in there. It'll be Wu Chen Yang. He is the cleanup hitter. Remember, they just retired the number three hole hitter, Fan Chen Jun, for the final out with a strikeout in the fourth. It's a very good chance. We don't see him at the plate again. Slow roller to third. Jacobus, easy play. Oh, my. I tell you what. Plenty of time there to get in front of it. He came through nice and smooth. Man, looking like a veteran out there on his wrong foot. Still got it. No worries in the world. He didn't even have to, Todd, but he did. Showing it off. Gorgeous play right there. Like he's done it 100 times. 74 pitches. Wheel was out there warming up, so if he reaches 85, Good chance, that's the next pitcher here. Sky high, and Jacobus, the catcher who's calling it. Jacobus, nice play to third baseman. And that may have been a fair ball that kept dragging back into fair territory. Not an easy one. Good smile. Tell you what, this is huge. Three pitches, two outs. And Shang Da, he wants to know, hey, we might need a little switch here. But yes, huge for Helmier, having a phenomenal outing. Might be the slowest pace, but he's lulling these hitters to sleep. Let 
And now he's starting to really challenge him inside. Remember, they started him off away, away, away. Now he's like, you got a kitchen because I'm coming in it. And he's been going on that inside part of the plate, jamming him up. He has allowed only one hit today. And it was that pop up on the infield between three Curacao players. That's it. Ye Chin Han now up with two down in the fifth. Strike one. How about the beauty of this game? I mean, baseball, when they have the ace on the mound, they've saved him for the top of the order, and Curacao gets a couple of hits. So unpredictable. Well, just the fearlessness. I mean, yeah. that's what I love is we've been talking all week about the best player that's here in Williamsport, and this Curacao team was not phased when he came into this game. And you know how that plays with the other teams. Like, they're a little tired of hearing about the other best player. On the ground is short. Yes, Wheel stays down on it. And that's the beauty of this team. Their defense. Wheel asks everybody on that side to get up and cheer. Awfully impressive 2 0 lead. Bottom five. We're back for a thinning. It all fell apart or broke up. We started it with a camera shattering, and you know, then there was a big pause, and maybe, maybe that allowed the team from Curacao, like Jaden Wheel, a little time to get, get his head right because they both got hits off of the great dominating pitcher, Fawn from Chinese Taipei. This was the game changing moment. A little punt thrown away, and then the catcher went and made no reason to do that. The runner at third wasn't moving Elosize, but they threw it over both the heads of the big guy, Fawn, and his backup. That little watch party there at the Somville Mall in Curacao. And the uh, interest in that country is only going up. Think about it. Jess and Frage last year it was a one nothing game that Chinese Taipei lost to Curacao they haven't scored in uh, 11 innings of international championship baseball yeah, against that, Curacao that's unlike them they put runs on they hit the ball hard it just hasn't been their day today at the plate yep say hi to the kids from Texas and California 330 Eastern time or 50 minutes after this one ends, but no earlier than 3.30 will start as Deshaun Winkler looks at strike one. Uh, how cool is that, too? You're prepping for the biggest game of your life. You're all sitting there watching the game together. Yeah, I'd have to walk away a little bit. I wouldn't have to, I'd have to be on the other side like, hey, don't look at me. Don't look at me. I want to beat you. I don't yes. want to sit with you. I think that'll happen once they get on the field. You guys both agree with the move to bring Fawn in there to face the top of the order, regardless of the way it played out. Would you have done the same thing? I, I don't think I would have. I, no? I, I think I would have let let um, Yuan pitch. Maybe if he let, gave one runner on, maybe I would have brought him in after that. He was doing a fine job. No hits through three innings there. I, I would have left him in. Okay. And the plan was for him to close, and I think that that's where it should have stayed. Is you get a lead, then bring him in. The one two. And a whole different approach and Everett has talked about like th this is totally about winning you know we, we hear all the other coaches mention fun and joy and having <laughs> a great time and I mean, he's made it very clear the goal is to bring the overall One, championship two. back to the island of Curacao oh. the Jurics and Profar team of 04 the last to win it all breaking pitch Winklar gone on strikes the Little League Community Heroes Recognition Program helps to honor those dedicated individuals who not only volunteer their time at local Little League programs, but they contribute in other ways to improve their communities. To learn more or to nominate a community hero, visit littleleague.org slash community heroes. We echo that. A giant thank you to everybody that makes Little League baseball and softball possible around the world. One man down, bottom five, two nothing Curacao. A little high to Jaden Lorenz Marti, the catcher. Give credit to him. He's he's caught a heck of a game too as well. No pass balls. He's coming up here ready to mash right on top of the plate. One ball, one strike. 
Zaino down there, the man whose voice you've heard most of the day, did acknowledge yesterday you have to almost play perfect baseball to beat them. Talking about the kids from Chinese Taipei. Off speed, third base. Woo! You on. That was pretty. Their base getting some lead. Yes, yes. Nothing like a one hop on a Saturday afternoon for you down there at third base. <laughs> Get those easy ones. Take your step throw to first. Very nice play. Well, with all due respect to the offense, I mean, the hero of this day has been this kid right here, Helmier. Helmier. He's going to go to the next inning with seven pitches to throw. He could easily get through two guys if he keeps throwing strikes. He has kept Chinese Taipei at bay, just allowed one hit. I just like that. He's his favorite player's favorite player, Kenley Jansen. Yeah. Locked in on Helmier. This is the uh, young man that when he wins the lottery is going to buy Aruba. And on the ground, that's off the glove of the first baseman, fielded by the second baseman. And a good job, it went off. She. But Lee E. Jin was there. We'll go 3-4-3 three, three, and now head to the sixth. Great day here in Williamsport, the Little League Baseball World Series. Championship Saturday on ABC is presented by T-Mobile, America's largest, fastest 5G network. Aboa Little League. Can they do it again and repeat what happened last year in 2022? They got a run when Provostia scored, and they kept Chinese Taipei at bay. They didn't give up a run. Five of those kids are back this year. And in their seventh international championship appearance, they are trying to take home the big trophy. The international championship would be one thing. The whole thing is a whole different ball of wax. They won it all back in 2004. They are three outs away from doing it again. And the story on the mound has been Helmer Helmier. He has been outstanding, very efficient. One hit, 78 pitches. He can throw 85. Wheel the shortstop, likely ready to come in. And that would set off a massive celebration on the island of Curacao. Last two innings, 15 total pitches, and this crowd is just about set to watch the United States Championship, and it continues to get bigger and bigger. Texas and California. Frazier, that's way too uncomfortable, too close for comfort for me. He's Sitting that competitor. close before you play in a championship game, but that's, that's how we do it here. All right, let's see as the six starts and the first pitch is a ball. Lin Wei Hong starts things. He did make contact, lined out to the shortstop. They need runners. Thought about bunning last time, so if he thinks about any short game. This is a take situation until you get a strike down, two runs. One ball, one strike. One of the smaller kids on the team, four foot nine, just 74 pounds. I'm Jacobus. I'm coming in a little further at third base here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Did square, and then in a sense, ducked right underneath that pitch. Two balls and a strike. Thought about it. Hong is the seventh batter in the order, and remember, they have 14 guys that have to hit before you get back to the top. So we are literally midway through their batting order. The setback significant too as well. He's got three more pitches to work from to try and get him out. If not, he'll be able to see another another batter. Wheel the reliever has been at times really good. At other times, he's shown a little bit of a lack of control on the mound. And he likely would be next. This is a big pitch, 2-2. A good job to foul it off. Talk about just wasting it. I mean, he knew all along. I don't want to hit this, but it could be a strike. Just foul it off. And this becomes the even bigger pitch. And 
and this will be the last batter that Helmir Helmir is going to be able to face today. As he will throw his 85th pitch of what has been an unbelievable performance. Good battle right here with Lin Wei Hong. Nobody out. Down two in the top of the sixth. Center field. Acosta to his left. Defense has looked very, very comfortable in the plays that they have had to make in center field at third base, wheel at shortstop. And they are two outs away. And we will have to have a pitching change. Crowd will stand and give Helmir Helmir an ovation. Oh, okay. He has put the baseball in the glove of Jalen Wheel. He needs two outs to win an international championship and we'll be back to South Williamsport and the World Series right after this. Boom, Babu. Boom, Babu. Boom, Swat. Boom. Many people following along this little league getting their stats provided by Game Changer, the official scorekeeping and stats technology partner of Little League and the Little League World Series. Now offering free live streaming for regular season local youth games plus automatic video highlight clips. When you stream and score your games, that is Game Changer. This game changed in the fourth inning, but you could make the case it changed when Zaino decided to pitch Helmir Helmier. Yeah, he started off. We talk about the curveball now. He started off with that fastball, pinpoint control. When he got away, a couple walks here and there, it didn't matter. He came right back and did what he had to do, focused on everything. What an outing by him, five and a third innings pitch. So now it's on the returner, the shortstop, Jalen Wheel. He's behind 1-0. That's on the inside corner, one ball, one strike. Think about the one hit, too, that Chinese Taipei has had was about three feet in front of home plate. Fly ball yep. that just plopped in there. Ball. Living inside again, that's down. Two balls and a strike. Real talked about it with Sebastian earlier. We need to stay calm, composed, pick each other up. Ooh, that is a swing, and that was a ball that nearly hit him. So now it's two balls and two strikes. There's some good velocity coming off of the arm of wheel right now. Yeah, that's a nasty pitch, kind of an accidental cutter. He will quick pitch two as well, try and get the hitters off balance. The count, two and two. They set up outside. And he blows him away. A strikeout from Jaden Wheel, and they are one out away. Same thing, fastball, coming right inside corner, a little bit up. Nothing you can do there, you swing at that one. Devastating. Stay tuned in between games, we will hear from the Curacao players, their manager. Look back at last night's Little League home run derby. Ball one, Leo Yoan, and certainly get you a preview of the upcoming U.S. championship game between California and Texas. Unreached on a walk, got to second base. That's in there for a strike. One ball, one strike. A strike away. Jalen's got a stare down yeah, going right now. And watch his celebration if he can get the strike out of Leo Yo on. On the ground is short, fielded, Jacobus to first, that's it! Curacao goes back to back and wins the international championship. I th think they might challenge this. Well, the last play of every Little League game here has to be looked at to confirm it. At least if he came off the bag. 
They will go to take a look. Jay Very Felicia tried his darndest to hold the bag, but let's hold on for a second. I got him on. He's out. Good call. They're just kind of waiting on this review, which will confirm the call on the field and will give Curacao its second consecutive international championship. And for the second year, they have held Chinese Taipei without a run. They beat them one nothing last year. And when this is confirmed, we'll beat them two nothing this year. And the roar will be loud. Call confirmed. Curacao celebrates, and now they come back and they'll throw their gloves up in the air and bounce around the mound. What a determined group of kids to come back with the five from last year. You knew that Taipei was looking forward to the opportunity of beating them. And they brought in their superstar pitcher, and that is the inning that Curacao scored their two runs off Fan Chen Jun. 100% belief. I mean, that is exactly what they came into this game with. Rap, we've talked about it all week. Chinese Taipei was the team that was so dominant. Curacao didn't see that. They wanted to face the ace. That's when they scored their runs. Unbelievable performance by Curacao. Wheel is hugging every member of the Chinese Taipei team. Everyone else is giving high fives and fist bumps, but Wheel is embracing all of them, and he knows what this means to win and to lose. They'll now have a chance to play tomorrow for the overall championship. Great game. Great game. In the five games they've played, they've scored just 11 runs. Like they haven't bludgeoned anybody. One or two run games is what they win. Well, you think about that. Think about the defense. I mean, if you're winning yeah. games like that, defense and pitching, Helmore, Helmier, unbelievable outing, just dominating performance. Well, Wheel came on to pitch, which meant somebody had to go play shortstop, and it was Jacobus, and he was the one that was responsible for the final out. Just smooth as silk. They've been like that all day on defense, <laughs> thrown off his wrong foot right to where it needs to be, and Zaino letting him know, we got this Kurosawa. He said it's all about this. Grab the momentum, grab the W, put the ball in play. Let's see if we can get them to play from behind. He thought maybe they were trying to do a little bit too much prior to this game. And they did exactly that. They stayed 0-0. We were hitless in this game through three innings. Kurosawa finally broke through with the two runs in the fourth, and that is what held it. How much that experience helped too, Carl? I think so. Five players coming back. They had no fear coming into this. There have been four no-hitters thrown at this year's Little League World Series. Two of them were by Chinese Taipei. And for three innings, they hadn't given up a hit. Curacao's bats woke up. They scored two. They win two years in a row. They are the international champions. We'll hear from them when we come back. Curacao International Champions, and for somebody that puts so much passion and energy into it, Zaino Everett, you certainly have to feel great for him and his kids. He is with Sevi. Thanks, Carl Zaino. Sevi. How are you feeling, brother? Very emotional, man. I, I can't even talk. Man. What are the emotions? Ah, so great. So great to be back and to, to win it. Uh, that's so special for me, man. Tell me a little about the decision to go with Helmir Helmir today and how you thought of his performance. Uh, I was watching them. They have a little bit problem with his lefties, and he decided to, to start El Mayero. What was the message to the guys ahead of this game? Just go out there and do our job. Just put the ball in play, and we will put some runs, and we will go home with the W. I 
lot of people thought you might saw their big pitcher, Fan Chen Jun, right from the jump. You didn't see him till later uh, in the game, but you guys were able to get to him. How'd you do that? Oh, I'm so surprised they start out on our pitcher. Did. We were so prepared for fun, and that's why I think when she come in, uh, we, we, we picked him. What did it take to get back here? Because it's a lot of the same kids. You got five of the same kids from last year's team. Yeah, it's, it's so special, man. Like I can tell you, it's so, so special. We have to keep doing our job. Just those five guys to step up and do the job to, to win ball games. Your childhood buddy, Jonathan Scope, the big leaguer right here in the stands. What does that mean to you to have his support? Uh, it's, uh, that song was something so great for me because he trusted me and I was telling him to come over here to watch me win and tell me I will be here for you, man. I'm awesome. So uh, and just all the people back home in Curacao, they're watching. We got some pictures from San Biel Mall. It feels like the whole country uh, is watching you guys. What does that mean? Ah, uh, it's just so big. I will tell it in Curacao. Me do she país, tan que pa sigue viva con nós e que da que viver positivo. Nos falta mais, nos falta de só te out mais. Nos está bem com ele, por só o manhã. Que da viva com nós. I don't speak Papiamento, but I think I understood. There's only 18 outs left, right? Last year you got to you got to this point, but you couldn't get over that last hurdle. What's your approach to tomorrow, and how much would it mean to win it all? Just keep calm, just keep calm, and do our best and put the ball in play and our defense is so good and we will win the game do as he says not as he does because my man zaino everett has some trouble keeping calm i'll tell you that much guys we'll send it back up to you yeah, understandably so that's great thank you very much sebi and there's a lot of passion there and he told us yesterday i got a one-year-old like i'm planning on doing this for years and years and years i want to bring my son over here to play and compete in the little league world series they couldn't have been better today. He said we need to play a near perfect game where we're not for that one error that they had early in the game by wheel. It was pretty darn close to perfect, wasn't it? Absolutely. And just the belief of what he said, staying calm, that ain't easy to do on this stage. That fourth inning just blew me away. I mean, to know the star that they were up against. But he said it. That's what we prepared for. They were caught off guard. He came in. They were ready. And these low run games, two hits, two runs. That's been their motto this whole time. They're not scoring a lot of runs, but their defense and pitching has dominated, and they're finding ways to win right. these games. Their emotional leader beyond Everett is, of course, Jadlin Wheel, who closed the game out. He's with Sebi. Thanks, Carl. All right, Jadlin, you got that last out. Tell me what you felt in that moment. Feels great. Yeah. Like I told you the last time, two <laughs> years in a row, I'm back. Let's get the chip. <laughs> <laughs> My man is not lacking confidence. Why are you so confident in this group? What makes this team special? The team is special. Uh, I can't say. We have everything. You got everything. You certainly got some guys who know how to step up in the big games. Y'all have been struggling at the bat. Then they bring in on the big gun, Fan Chen Jun. You were the first to rough him up. How did you do it? Uh, just be early on him. He has a great fastball, great curveball. Just be early. It's just you and me. You can admit it. Are you a little scared going up there against 80 miles an hour? No. No, he says no emphatically. All right, you got your dad up here. He's going crazy. We got the island going crazy back home. What's all that support mean to you? It feels good. Like I said, we know the families are sending us. Let's get the chip. Now, <laughs> you finished the game, but we got to talk about your teammate, Helmir Helmir. How good was he? He was so great because last night, all the nights that he's going to start, I tell him, stay prepared, stay prepared. You're going to do good. And, of course, there's one more game to go. Last year, you guys got to the championship but couldn't win it all. Have you thought about that game, and what would it mean to bring home the ship to Curacao? Yeah, because last year we couldn't do it. This year, let's get the chip. All right, guys, <laughs> let's get the chip. You heard it from Jadlin Wheel as we send it back up to you. A lot of chip conversation. Great stuff, Jadlin, and a terrific representative. He's got two up there. Those are the two championships that Curacao has won. And it's not going to be easy. This wasn't easy. The two teams from the United States are on the field. I imagine he starts the game tomorrow for them. I don't know if there's some thinking that one of these two teams struggles against a lefty versus a righty, but he's going to be in the middle of everything. Can you tell who their leader is? <laughs> yes. I mean, if you're going for the chip, you're putting the ball in that kid's hand. Yeah, we're talking about the chip here. Not the chip. <laughs> we're talking about the chip. He breathes energy, he breathes positivity. He's with the highs and the lows, and he's the guy that they're going to lean on tomorrow. He's going to lead off tomorrow, hopefully for Curacao with a bang again, a base hit to get them going. Have we moved from the natty to the chip? I know. I like it. It's going to be was like a, now. That was an internatty. <laughs> but now it's about the chip, and now it's what tomorrow will be about.
We look forward to seeing the Southwest team against the West, Needville, Texas, and El Segundo, California. Curacao will go back, and they will begin to think about who they will face tomorrow, but also what they accomplished today. Jalen Wheel and company, Helmer, Helmier, outstanding on the mound. Clutch hits when they needed them most in the fourth. They are your international champions. Curacao takes care of Chinese Taipei. The U.S. Championship is coming up right here on ABC.